Fair warning up front, y'all. I just got my lips redone. And for the record, if you've been watching me anytime in the last four years, I've always had my lips done. This is not a new development, but they're bruised. So if that grosses you out, just don't watch this video. <laughs> but if it, if it doesn't bother you, then I'm going to continue on with the video. So three, two, one. They're a little bit bruised. They're also pretty swollen. They're not going to be this large. This is very much just maintenance. <laughs> I like having my lip filler. I like it. It lasts a really, really, really long time on me. This is only my third time ever getting it. Oh, it's almost gonna be a headband day. It's driving me nuts. So anyway, in my series on the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes, myth is kind of the final boss <laughs> because it is this intimidating set of very unabashed purples. And in preparation for this video, I actually already tried a couple of looks with this to get my head around it because I wanted this to be a useful video on how I, with my skin tone and this not being necessarily my most ideal dispersion of colors, how I handle it without looking I don't know, like the makeup's wearing me kind of. So yeah, we're going to deal, I'm gonna limit myself specifically to myth on my eyes, but we're gonna do a full look. And we're gonna talk about basically how I construct that look around this so that these are still the star without making it look costumey. So let's go ahead and jump in. I just don't know if the hair is going to be able to stay down right now. I blew it out, I put product in it. I'm like this close to starting my period. Everything is driving me crazy right now. And that's how she's gonna be for right now. Okay. 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 Since everybody's tired of me only wearing the Chanel foundation, today I'm going to go with the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body because it has a very similar finish and it's a lot more affordable. So let's do that. <laughs> it's also a little bit deeper. So it's a little bit better of a match than the Chanel is. I don't have to mix it with anything. A little less coverage, but very skin-like. Also still has that nice cooling feeling to it. No fragrance. Oh my goodness, y'all. I feel like I am reluctant to give myself permission to breathe right now. November wore me out sooner than November was over, you know? And I still have commitments and things like that that I have to make good on. And I'm very, very, very extremely grateful for them and excited about them, but that doesn't change the, the fatigue. So I'm actually really psyched because I'm gonna go home and see my mom pretty soon. So that'll be a nice way to decompress after how much work it's been basically just building up to the holiday season. Cause once the holiday season really gets in swing, I don't know, like Black Friday's over and everything. Like December is nowhere near as bad as November. And I seem to always forget that, but like I was literally answering sponsorship emails when I was in labor on September 29th of 2020, right before my, my kiddo was born because everybody was just trying to get their ducks in a row for November. So that's how long it takes and that's how kind of like urgent I felt like it was. So I am lucky that I haven't gotten sick yet and I'm just gonna knock on wood there, but like it's mainly I think, and I'm not trying to be like holier than thou or anything, but I quit drinking. <laughs> And if you've been following my channel for a very long time, you know that this is sort of something that I've tried to do many times in the past, but I had a very valuable conversation with a friend of mine who's been sober for 10 years and I don't, I would not consider myself a problem drinker, but I just feel when I'm drinking that it's just not what my body wants me to do. And I just don't like that it takes my energy away from me. It takes the energy away from my ability to be present with my kiddo. It makes me wake up feeling crappy every day. And it, it's like, you know, even if I just have like a drink, my sleep being disrupted and then my feeling a little bit more and more and more run down each day and being like a little more depressed or whatever, removing that from my life, as simple as it sounds, it's been really difficult actually, just kind of getting my head right to do it. I know, I know it's actually so much harder than it sounds, but it's been an enormous, positive change in my life, a huge positive shift. 
And I've had my moments where I'm tempted, but I made it through Thanksgiving without a drink. And, you know, preparing family members and things like that. It's like, hey, guess what? I'm really into hot cocoa. <laughs> and I did, I just replaced my evening ritual with a freaking hot chocolate. And that got the job done. And I just sleep so much better. And I'm always just like a lot more with it. I have never, my husband makes fun of me, but like I've never been a fan of like altered states. You know, I never did drugs or anything like that. It's just not something that really appeals to me. Maybe I'm a control freak, but more than anything, it's like, I feel like I have a pretty tenuous grip on sanity as it is. <laughs> I don't need all that help. <laughs> Plus I also feel like, and this has definitely been my mantra, I'm like, I've had enough alcohol in my life and enough drunk nights in my life. <laughs> I know what everything that alcohol can do. Like I've experienced everything that it's capable of. I'm like, that's good. I'm good with that. Like, that's it. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be surprised by alcohol anymore. And it's just kind of like not that appealing to me anymore. So there's that. And yeah, it, I feel like it's really helped puffiness in my face go down. It's helped with acne. It's helped with my immune system, my digestion. You know, everybody's different, but that's been my, that's been my project lately. I'm gonna do eyeshadow first. <laughs> like complexion and then eyeshadow because I wanna show y'all how my brain starts churning once these get on my eyeballs. And today, in order to really face down the final boss, we're using every shade in this palette. There are only six, but we're using all of them. So here she is. I will swatch her real quick. I feel like this topper swatches really poorly and I have a little, <laughs> I accidentally tried to swatch the same one twice. This topper swatches really poorly and looks absolutely incredible on the eyes. So be not afraid, but the colors there are Mauve Decade. Is this one right here. Nocturama, which looks like it's black, but it's not. It's just a really pretty kind of sooty dark brown. Faded Amethyst. <laughs> I'm having so much fun here. Uh, Victorian trim, velvet stone, sorry, violet stone, velvet formula, and illusionism. That was very, very elegant khaki. So you can see these are drama. They're just drama. Like if you wanted to stay away from drama, you would have to, you know, concentrate on maybe like three shades, basically avoid these. <laughs> if you want to avoid drama, avoid those because you know that in and of itself is it kind of looks you know vega adjacent if you watched the vega video vega is the gray toned palette that i fell in love with in real time while filming but yeah i mean you look at that and it's like sure you know a topper might be a little bit exciting but these are the ones that it's like i have to summon the courage a little bit so i'm gonna start by building my base and i am going to try not to lean on what would be kind of the easier tones in this palette. So, you know, if I really wanted to just play it safe, I could, you know, just like I said, go with those gray tones. I could get a lot of use out of this palette just doing that, but I want to show that it is possible. So I am going to start with Mauve Decade. And it's this beautiful gray with like a touch of lavender in it, a lavender gray, if you will. And if this is my first Lisa Eldridge video, like Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palette video that you have watched, I will go ahead and just give you a brief description of the formulas. So the main differentiator for these formulas is just how putty-like they are. They pick up really beautifully on a brush, but they are unconventional in the sense that I find they have no fallout because the brushes, especially a synthetic brush, you kind of have to work it, you know, to pick some of this up and it has enough stick to it that it spreads a, like some kind of hybrid between a putty and a paint. It's like a gel to powder texture. And she described some of her matte shades being like that, kind of a, you know, gel to powder, but I think they kind of all are to some degree. With that said, I will say I, I absolutely adore it. I really, really prefer this texture to a lot of other textures because it just works the way that I think about applying makeup. I understand that there are probably going to be people, it's kind of like that bounce and blur formula. It's not exactly like that. That's much more like the one from Bare Minerals. It's much more difficult to build color because it does continue to move around so much. It has a lot less commitment on the skin, but they all pull, I feel like a little bit less sooty on the skin as a result of the formula. And so 
while some of them will look black in the pan, they, I know that there is one that is actually like a true black, but they usually have some kind of undertone that reveals itself on the skin. So yes, that looks gray in the pan, but on my skin, it looks very lavender. Now, I'm going to go in <laughs> nervously with the deeper purple here. I'm gonna use that right here on the outer portion of my lid, but I'm gonna try and avoid too much of the crease. But that's another thing about these is they really put, they really put, they really go right where you put them. <laughs> it's really bringing out my bruise, isn't it? I'm thinking about doing an entire video that's just about like the glow up over the years. By the way, I accidentally picked up a little bit of the kind of magenta shade on my brush. So that's why that looks like that. I tried to wipe it off, but it's on there. And just like the cost of everything, because I don't consider myself to be someone who had some kind of, you know, dramatic all-in-one glow up or something. But at the same time, if you look at me, when I started my channel, I was blonde. I had my natural God-given teeth. I had my natural God-given lips. I didn't have Botox yet. I was also 27. Well, I was 31 when I like properly started this version of my channel, but I've been on YouTube for a long time. My lip filler, I've had it done a few times. This is now the third time. I am one of those people who is very lucky in the sense that I don't metabolize filler very quickly. I get one syringe of what's called a Volbella and it's like the one of the most long lasting, longest lasting, if you will, materials. It's just, highly, you know, they're just different versions of hyaluronic acid. And I'm gonna go in with that magenta now, kind of like onto the lid a little bit, although they're not quite even. But I feel like I came in with more of an idea of what I wanted this time. And I was able to show her a picture of what I wanted and describe it. And she was just extraordinarily attentive to you know the specifics of what I was asking for. And I think that this will be the most that I've ever liked them. I mean, obviously they're very swollen, they're going to shrink and they are very bruised. They will, they will look normal in a few days. But the main thing that I asked for this time was just to have them be a little bit more towards the center because my bottom lip loves to get kind of square and my eyes are really close set. And so it's kind of more about balancing my face than it is about like matching that. Because if this is too wide, it actually makes my eyes look even closer together. Look at how beautifully those layer together. And I think that that's really important when I specifically am working with something as kind of like blue purple as that color is right there that's called Violet Stone is actually to take this warmer purple. And yes, you can't have warm purples and cool purples. This one's got a lot of blue in it. This one's got more red in it. And not just put it next to it, but actually blur them together because the reason a color like that has a hard time on my skin is because I don't have a lot of the mid-tones in my skin to be able to cover the distance between my undertones and that color. And so it can kind of leave this hazy appearance and not really blend evenly. And it's not the fault of the shadow. It's just the fact that I have like neutral, very relatively desaturated skin that has a little bit of like a golden undertone to it. And this is basically the opposite. It's a very saturated, not super complex, blue purple. And so building in that little bit of red, it's like the same thing as when you try and dye your hair brown or black on top of it being like a very pearl white, it's going to wash out and look gray. And that's because you have to pay extra attention to have your hair rebuilt with the in-between shades, the kind of like base reds and things like that that are going to make a color like that look more realistic. And that is the case with this as well. That said, obviously if you have more melanated skin, it's probably going to work better on you. Now, very melanated golden skin, 
you still might need a little, it's pro just probably not going to look purple. You know what I mean? It's not going to look screaming purple on you, but that hmm, might be a good thing. <laughs> you know, it will probably kind of like mute it down and make it look a little bit more, you know, wearable. Now I'm going, we've taken, we've now used three shades. I'm going to use this one right here illusionism and like I said this one is one that's like looks just really underwhelming in a swatch and then you put it on your eyes and you're like oh my lord in heaven hallowed be thy name look at that I always feel like I'm doing a impression of that TikTok girl who just does the southern accents all the time <laughs> Recently, she did one of Duke's mayonnaise recently, but um, or a while back, but recently she did the one where it was like <laughs> Candace Cameron's makeup artist after she fired all of the gays. And it was like, <laughs> this woman, she's like, I did all the makeup for the local dance team. Just gonna put a little red lipstick on ya. There you go, darling. And I was like, this is incredible. Hallowed be thy name. I am from Tallahassee, Florida at the end of the day. I can fall right in that side and draw pretty easily as I can. And what's even funnier is that my husband can't and he tries really hard and he ends up sounding like some kind of drunk foghorn leghorn parody of a uh, old South Charleston man or something. It's just, it's very bad. Very, very bad and hard to listen to. We're getting somewhere. I know that after all of my having and hawing and making it look like this is very easy, is because I've already done this a couple of times. The first couple of times I started in straight with like the deepest shade and tried to work my way that way. I have tried, like I said, to kind of back off from it. And I'm like, mm, yes, but it's not really showing what the palette was designed to do because I want to fight the final boss, you know? And so, I am showing you something that I have already practiced a few times in this case. This isn't going to be live troubleshooting. So I'm taking Illusionism and it works great on your finger because it does have that kind of creamy consistency. So look how it just blends. It's not picking a whole bunch of the other color back up, but it just blends so beautifully. And then we have the gray shade here. I'm gonna take that on a pencil brush and I'm gonna use it kind of like grungy around my lash line. And that's just in an effort to use everything. I'm not really sure that like it's something that's incredibly necessary, but I think that it helps because the main thing that's difficult is purple right against my brown eyes <laughs> because it can make them kind of glow strange colors by contrast and so taking something that's a little bit more neutral and even a little bit more satin and putting that kind of right next to my eyes can sort of subtly break up that effect and you don't even really notice that that color is there but you notice that my eye doesn't glow quite as much a strange color Now, if you have like those amazing light, you know, turquoise eyes or something, or like icy blue, go off. You know, green, that aventurine color. Holly Beth did a look with this palette and I was like, go off queen, you look amazing. Cause she's a redhead, you know, with like translucent green blue eyes. It's perfect for her. And like I said, you know, for deeper skin tones, I feel like this is going to be way less dramatic. You still have textures that are going to build a ton of opacity and you can get the drama, but it's just not gonna happen as fast. You know what I mean? It's not gonna run away from you the way that it runs away from me just on the basis of contrast. So, you know, it has a lot of customers, even if I'm not the one that like, you know, not everything can be made for me. And a lot of these palettes really were. But this is one of the ones that I bought with my money because it was the one that had the most shades in it that I thought were going to work on me. And pff, honestly, I'm not like rescinding that. It's, it, it's just the fact that those, the pink and the purple are, or the, you know, the purple and the purple <laughs> are just a lot more vivid than, you know, I had originally kind of assumed. I'm gonna take a little more of that, that gray, which still works because it's not pure gray. It's just gray by contrast. It's still got a lot of purple in it. 
and working that underneath my eyes, going very Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And I'm gonna take the black, it's not black though. It's like, Nocturama is what it's called, but it's actually like a very pretty sooty gray purple. I'm gonna work that right into kind of a false crease out here. It's giving Wednesday. I haven't watched that yet. I want to. Mike and I both want to. But do you see what I mean that that's not black? And I'm actually gonna take a little bit of the Estrella Brilliant Eye Brightener, which is basically a shimmery white. And put that right on the inner corner because it's just gonna make that little bit sparkle and it'll kind of draw a little more attention to illusionism, right? Can even put a little bit more illusionism on top. I'm definitely looking very spooky as a result of my shirt. The fact that I don't have any other like color cosmetics on and my lips are purple. <laughs> There's nothing really on this brush. I'm just using it to sort of double check and make sure everything is nice and blended. And it's picking up some color, but that's okay. It's mostly that kind of pink color. And it makes it sort of glow on the edges. Not even mad at that. What are you? Stop that. Okay, so then the question becomes, what do we do with the rest of my face? Because yeah, you know, I take a picture on Instagram if I did my brows and everything, and like that's great, right? But how do we make it fit into a look that is not wearing me? First, I'm gonna start with some contour, and I'm going to use Hindash's carve like that. And I'm going to mix that with a little bit of my Make Beauty foundation. About half and half. And it makes just a beautiful, creamy, natural looking contour for me. And it's just been one of my favorite ways to achieve that look lately. Because it's, oh, it's so low effort. The biggest effort is mixing them together, which takes two seconds. But when you apply it, it just, I mean, <laughs> it's, it, you hardly have to do anything. It just blends right into everything else. And you can really control it because you can mix it with a complexion product. So you can make it kind of the color that you want it to be. I'm gonna use that to basically pull from the eye look out up onto the temple like that. That's a Kiki G trick. Put a little bit of that down here. Make sure that makes it all the way up into the hairline. Feel like I'm losing a little bit of the blend here. It's just looking a little bit socket-y. There we go. Okay, next is bronzer-ish. And I just want to use something really subtle that leans a touch rosy. And I'm gonna use my Gucci for that. I'm really barely putting any on. It's mainly just kind of giving a little bit of a gradation, gradation between the contour and the rest of my skin. And because the eye look is so cool toned, this is something that I do as kind of a trick all the time. To make something look more at home, you can take a little bit of your bronzer or your blush or whatever you see is kind of missing and just add that in to kind of where your skin is showing through. So it looks like it's a more unified look. So it's like I'm not changing the eye look really, I'm just making it look more like my skin is all the same color underneath, you know? instead of it kind of showing through there and looking patchy and a little bit too like contrasty against the eyeshadow. And the blush that I've chosen for this is the Anastasia Stick Blush in Latte because it's like so close to just not even being there at all. I mean, there's plenty of pigment to it. It's just very, very, very similar to my skin tone, but just enough that, you know, it's flattering. It's what we call a nude blush for my skin tone. Another similar one is Mimi from Westman Atelier, but look at that. And I'm almost just kind of picking up that color that was created by layering the bronzer over my eyeshadow. And I'm applying it like really not very much. <laughs> 
just not a lot of it. And applying it just to that kind of meaty portion of the outside of my cheek, like that. My nose, a little on my chin, but basically it's just kind of like an enhancement to the bronzer more than it is an actual like blush appearance. Okay, I'm gonna do my eyeliner and my brows and my mascara. I'm gonna go, I think black pretty much on everything. Not on my brows, <laughs> but on my like eyeliner and everything. And I do think that I will, I have been using the Persona eyeliner, if I can locate it again, in Plum on my waterline. So let me zoom through that and then we will tackle whatever it is I wanna do on my lips. <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna use the Make Mascara because it's really nice. Everybody says that it lays way too much product on. And it's so wet, but like, I don't know. I don't really have a problem with it. I don't wipe it all off on the tube or anything. Does what it does what it's supposed to do for me. Ooh, big beautiful lashes. I'm going to take some of the Instant Brow Fix here from Thrive, ultra defining. And okay, I just wanna like make a decision on my lips here. I'm wondering, and I haven't tried this yet because what I ended up deciding on before was just kind of a clear lip gloss, just, you know, own the issue. But I'm wondering if a black lip gloss might be the answer. So I have my Ismaia here. Huh. <laughs> it's a choice. Ah, I mean, I think that without the bruising, it might've been fine, but it's kind of leaning a little too hard. It's a little on the nose. I mean, it'll give you all a chance to look at it if you're interested. Like that might strike some of y'all's fancy, but I don't think that that's where I want to land. Like I don't hate it, but it's not where I want to land. How I would approach a look like this, finishing it with a lip on me is with something typical, you know, that's gonna blank my lip out. And I'm not even gonna line my lips today because they're so swollen. It just makes them completely ridiculous looking. I'm not that person who on me, I'm like, oh, the bigger the better. It's like, no, they hit a point of being a little bit silly looking. And right now they're a little bit silly looking, but you can see like that is the Westman Atelier Squeaky Clean Liquid Lip Balm Nana. Like it has just enough purple in it. I'm blocking out my bruises. My lips are still here, but it's also pulling the look together. Oh, by the way, my Persona Plum Eyeliner just gave up. Yeah, I sharpened that Plum Eyeliner again, and I just, it might go on my eyelid, but it would not go on my waterline. It just like, just was not having it, so. I think that that'll help. The shirt is sheer on the shoulders and I mean on the arms. And so like, I'm always just a little bit disconcerted when I spray myself with something because I'm like, why can I feel it on my arms? So all things considered, would I buy Myth again if I were just me? Probably not. Just because those shades, I mean, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful, but like I have to strategize pretty hard around it. And it's just purpler than I expected it to be. And there are just other things that I would reach for in my own routine. But 
Does that mean that I'm going to shy away from reaching for that when I'm looking for this particular kind of drama? Absolutely not, because the formulas are so agreeable. That is what I keep coming back to every time I talk about any of these palettes, is like, it makes it easier to experiment and try something that is outside your comfort zone from a color standpoint, because you can rely on the performance of the formulas to not betray you. It's just basically removing an entire variable from the situation, right? I am going to powder just a tippity touch here as a finishing, a finishing touch. I am using the Laura Mercier that they sent me. And I get why it is a fan fave, especially after using MAC Fix Plus Magic Radiance. I always like to powder a little bit on the parts of my face that I feel like are kind of distracting to the eye if they are shiny. So the chin, for example, the under eye, but I feel like the powder itself is the exception, not the rule. And so it is more beneficial for the efficiency of my look, honestly, and to end up with less on my face to spray all over and then selectively powder than to powder all over and selectively spray. You know, I apologize for my bruised lips. And honestly, I feel like my eyebrows are not really like dark enough to support this look right now. Maybe I'll pull out another pencil. Maybe this will just fill in the details. This is the Westman Atelier. I'll use a tiny, tiny bit of my Charlotte Tilbury contour here. Another thing that's actually really nice to do after a finishing spray is a powder contour because you want a contour to absorb the light, not reflect it. And so you can use that both as a mattifying tool, but also to build a more believable shadow. All right, I mean, you know, it is what it is with my lips, but I do think that we, you know, did something really cool and dramatic here. And when I just like throw on a sweatshirt with this look, it is not quite so dramatic, you know? It's just about the whole look that I've kind of put together with it. I let it really inspire me as I always do. And I'm really glad that I have it for the sake of review. I feel like it's something that is so different when you get it in your hands than it is when you're looking at it online. And so that is like literally the type of product that I feel like an online review like this, you know, that's long and detailed, is the most useful for because it's more like you having it in your hands. So this is the look that we were able to achieve today. And I definitely think I'll be pulling some of these shadows for my ideal six pan by the end of it. But that will be my, you know, culmination of this series is, you know, I think the next one is going to be, unless you want me to do like a full one of like Cinnabar or a full one. Uh, I don't know. What do you want to see? Do you want to see another one or another two like dedicated videos to this before we do my culmination or no? Because I did just see word essentially from Lisa Eldridge that after all of the requests and all of the like overwhelming interest in it, she is going to do empty palettes where you can completely customize the palettes and she's going to be releasing new color curations in 2023. I don't know when in 2023, it might be like right after the new year or it might be, you know, a year from now, I don't know. But I do know that that is coming. Nonetheless, I think that it's very valuable to see, you know, the differences between what's currently on offer and also, you know, my my curated ideal six pan. So let me know either the curations that she created or well, hair stuck to my nose, or if y'all have different colors that you want me to combine from different palettes, let me know. And I can like make a custom palette and do looks specifically from that as well. So I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, you should probably subscribe if you haven't already. You're probably gonna keep watching them anyway. So I will put the other videos from this series right here for y'all to watch. Thank y'all so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.